Hallelujah, Jesus. If you'd stand with me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Scripture text, Exodus 25 and 10. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is just a, a wonderful Hallelujah. presence, spirit, whatever you want to say. There is a release in the room today. There really is a release and a healing in the room today. Not that it isn't here all the time, but boy, it's just, it's just nice to know that you know, that you know, that you know that He is ever present. Amen? Yes. But in Exodus 25 and 10, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. See, I kept it PG. But now if, if, if Brother uh, Pilate was here, he'd probably say it a little different. But there was an ark of shittim wood, and two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And in 25 and 11, and thou shalt overlay it. I want you to seal it. I want you to overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. If we could pray, and I don't mean just pray for this service, but I mean really pray about eternal matters. Father, help us right now to be so wrapped up in eternal matters. Things that are going to pass from this life to the next. Things that are everlasting from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Smile at somebody and you can be seated. Hallelujah. And the message title today is the ark is complete. Look at your neighbor and say, the ark is complete. Hallelujah. But Noah, he was the first one to, to build an ark. Okay? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He was the first one to build an ark, and he, uh, it's kind of weird. You ever wonder that I was, I was actually in a, a, a Bible class, here a while back, it wasn't this past Bible class, but I wrote it down in my notes. I think it was back in May sometime. And have you ever wondered if Noah took his time <clears throat> building the ark, knowing that once he got it finished, a judgment was coming? I want you to imagine that. Imagine the Lord gives you a project to do, but he's already told you that this project is going to be life-changing. This is going to be an end of what we call the planet Earth and all that's there on it, okay? And it's going to completely change the face of the Earth and completely change how many people's here. And now I know I want you to build this ark. And it took him 100 years, thereabouts, to build an ark. And I wonder that when he was building this ark, if he was wondering to himself, you realize when this is finished, there's going to come a time, because see, God don't lie. And he had already told Noah. He told Noah before Noah ever swung the hammer one time. Noah didn't even get a chance to get one splinter in his hand yet. That there's a judgment coming. How would you like to be known? How would you like to have the responsibility shared with you that there's a judgment coming and now you've got to go work on something every day of your life that is going to, going to bring it to pass? And he's just waiting until the ark is finished. Look at your name and say, the ark is finished. Hallelujah. I'd like to read Genesis 16, excuse me, 6 and 17. Genesis 6 and 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, 
thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. See, Noah's obedience saved him and his family. And don't, don't tell me that obedience doesn't play a role in this, because it does. It really, really, really does. And, you, and I know people will throw obedience in with works and say, well, you're not saved by works. But no, but you are saved by being obedient to the directions and the following of Christ. Amen? Amen. But I wonder, during that 100-year period of time that Noah's building this thing, is you think he ever got discouraged? You think he ever got to the point where he said, I just want to quit? Or you think he just had the passion every day to just go hammer and nail for 100 years? <laughs> I'll bet you there was times that he just didn't feel like going to work that day. I'll bet you there was times when he was just tired of people showing up, asking him all the questions. What are you doing? What are you doing that for? Why are you living this way? Why are you living that way? But see, he was asked to do something, and so he did it. And there was an amazing thing that the, that the Lord had said to do. Was a, He said that pitch, pitch this thing within and without. Genesis 6 and 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And that just grabbed me this morning, that pitch. I'm trying to figure out what is pitch. Okay, is it a glue? Is it a petroleum product? What, what is pitch? What is there that could have sealed the inside and the outside of this boat good enough that it would float? And after all my research and everything, because, see, that's a great debate. Because, see, everybody says, well, the dinosaurs, where we get our big reservoirs of all the oil deposits, they hadn't died yet, and this, that, or the other, so it couldn't have been a petroleum product. But whatever it was, it sealed and did the job. And it was available for Noah at that time. But see, this is what I was led to believe, was that when things die, they get repurposed. Okay? You know, the oil in your car, or, or the gas in your car, or the oil in your, your engine, that's a repurposing of something that was already found in the ground and refined, right? But see, death, if it was an organic matter, or whether it was a heartbeat inside of an animal matter. This pitch had a beginning, but then it comes to a place to where it has a real usefulness. It has the ability to seal something, the ability to make it watertight, the ability to be used again in a whole different form and fashion. See, death covered the ark inside and out. And see, I'd never thought about this, and I thought, you know what? I'm looking at a boat, because see, in Kentucky, they have a boat that they have built to scale, right? And this boat to scale is pretty huge. And all you can see is, is the natural wood of that ark. But I wonder back in Noah's day, is if I wonder if that pitch had a color to it. And I wonder if it was almost probably just like a, a black, sticky substance. And I wonder if it had an odor to it. I wonder, because see, most dead things, you'll know they're dead because there's an odor with it. Right? Out there at ADM, you'll swear some of the stuff is dead that's all around you. Because we deal with protein all the time, and protein left to its own devices and not processed properly stinks really, really bad. Anybody have a young, a young person that you changed their diaper? It's called protein. <laughs> They're taking a lot of protein in. Amen? And so I wonder if there was an odor or a smell that was in this ark, outside the ark. It's just a thought. I don't have anything to, you know, to support that except that he did say pitch it within and without. And I got to believe this, that he did a real good job of sealing that boat. If your whole life depends upon that boat being sealed, are you just going to do a half job, a halfway? Or are you going to think to yourself, you know what? I think this is worth me putting my time and effort into. Ephesians 1 and 13, In whom you also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of salvation, in whom... 
also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So now here we got an ark in the Old Testament. Okay? Well, let me read one more verse and then we'll go to there. 2 Corinthians 1 and 22 says, Who also has sealed us and give us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. See, we are sealed with a living spirit. We're sealed with his life. An eternal life. Can I hear you say eternal life? See, Thursday night was awesome for me. It was life-changing. This Thursday night was life-changing in my life. It, it, it was so amazing what the pastor had said. He talked about time and the related feast during those time frames. And then it hit me, while he's talking about time and those related time frames, everything that he was getting ready to talk about and everything that he did talk about, God was just overflowing me with. Time related equals temporal. Anything in your life that's time related, you can put your own hand on your heart. It's a time related thing, isn't it? It, it is not going to tick forever, is it? You can put your hand on your head, your eyes, anywhere on you. This knee that decided to give me problems yesterday, for about, I don't know, I'm going to guess it to be about, about the last month, month and a half, it's been popping loudly, okay? It's been letting me know there's an issue, but it hasn't been slowing me down any. Brother Martin, Sister Martin, did you see me slowing down in the dollar store the other day? I was getting with it, wasn't I? I had a plan. I was going in to get white poster board, and I got in there, and I got out. I left them to all their spending. I didn't even look down the aisle and say bye, okay? I headed out to the door because I got a lot of stuff on my list. So I wasn't, that, they seen me, I, I think it was probably either Thursday or Friday, was it? I'm not sure, but see, Saturday came. Saturday came, and I got on the linoleum, and when I went to get up, the knee didn't pop. It just got real tight, and a little slight tear just opened up a little bit more. And so now, the only time it hurts is when I put weight on it. That's the only time. I can sit here, and it's just tight as it wants to be, but it really doesn't hurt. It just feels like a, a vice grips on it. But boy, when I put, I put pressure on there, Brother Pope, she lets me know things ain't right. There's something wrong. But getting back to what's temporal, see, this is temporal right here. This ain't eternal. This doesn't pass through the veil with me. You understand? This right here can be healed just as fast as it came. Amen, Sister Punk? Okay? Just as fast as me getting on that floor and up off that floor, it can be healed that fast. I'm praying it is. Hallelujah. But time-related equals temporal. See, what, once a year, the high priest, they entered in. That's a time frame thing. Once a year. Okay? We need a perfect sacrifice to end the time cycle. If you don't have that perfect sacrifice named Jesus Christ in your life, then your, your whole life is going to be time-related. Only thing you'll be able to think about is what is affecting me right now in time. Amen? But I got a feeling, if you have an eternal God in you, that he wants to take you to a time-related place and make all things new. And in that all things made new, I got to believe this, it don't come with a clock. It comes with every eternal purpose known to man. Oh, hallelujah. But we needed a, a perfect sacrifice to end the time cycle. Eternal now, not time related. Eternal versus time or temporal. Can we believe in the eternal and not the temporal? See, Lazarus' healing was in the eternal, okay? Even though he ended up passing again, it stepped into a zone there where he couldn't be rose up again in the time frame. It was a purpose there that he says, you know, we're going to, we must go, okay, back to Lazarus for he's asleep. And they're not understanding all this stuff because he got word to several days before that. But see, God's trying to give them a message right here. Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to wait till where no man has ever rose again. 
and I'm going to wait a full, not one day, not two days, but like three or four days right there. I don't remember exactly what day pattern it was, but no man had ever gotten up past that time frame. I want them to see what an eternal work looks like. I want them to see what an eternal God can do in this whole thing they call a time frame. Amen? See, the death of Jesus was a, a temporal thing, but the resurrection was eternal. See, if you want to live just in the death of Jesus Christ, you're still in a time frame. You're still in a time frame mode that says, you know what, this affects me. And I'm tired of them affecting me. I'm tired of this going on in my life. I'm tired of this. But see, if you get into a resurrected life, and you can actually get into that being rose up on the third day life that says, you know what? I got something in me that's just, it's just, it's driving and pumping me like an eternal pump. Like an eternal thought. An eternal weight of glory inside of me. Amen? Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's not in a time frame of temporal stuff, but he is inside of an eternal God, an eternal, eternal weight of glory that God says, you know, come inside of me. Get hid inside of me. I want all the temporal stuff to be gone in your life, and I want you to really be hid in me. I'll take care of everything. I'll take care of all your needs, all your wants, all your desires. Just get inside of me. And see, that's the sad part about my life. I can't speak for your own. Is I get wrapped up in temporal things, and the temporal things want to become so real to me that I look at those temporal things and I say, I have to do something about this temporal situation. And God is saying, trust me. Don't get in the car and push me over and, let, and, and drive and keep looking over at me and saying, I trust you. I just know where I'm going. I trust you, but I just know where I'm going. Let the man drive. Let him drive. He knows so well on where he wants to take us. I don't recall one time in Noah's day that the ark had any kind of rudder, any kind of oars, any kind of steering device. Just trust me. Can you just trust me? Hallelujah. But in him is eternal location. The spirit is eternal. The flesh is temporal. Eternal mindset becoming eternal. Being able to identify. That's the big word today. Being able to identify. See, now kids, they know where the toy box is. They know what belongs in the toy box and what doesn't belong in the toy box, right? When you tell them to clean up their toys, they're supposed to clean up their toys and then the dirty laundry goes into a clothes basket. It isn't dirty laundry goes into the toy box and the toys go into the laundry basket. It's how they learn to, com to uh, what's the word? Uh, compartmentalize, am I saying that right? To know where it fits and where it goes. So many times I'm messed up in my thoughts because it's something temporal and I'm trying to make it eternal. He has never one time told me, go and hate this person with everything that's in you because it's an eternal matter. But you know how many times it's been a temporal matter and I tried to take it and put it in the wrong category and, and shove it in there and say, Jesus, you deal with this. And you didn't even put it in the right box, son. You know, you, you're taking a temporal matter that don't matter a lick and you're trying to shove it in this box of eternal things. I know. I'm, I'm that guy that just sees things a little different. I know. Hallelujah. But being able to identify temporal versus eternal. It doesn't matter if it's temporal. David, I, I love David. He asked him every time when he'd go to battle, which way do you want me to go this time? See, he understood eternal things versus temporal things. It might have been a temporal battle, but he always addressed an eternal God and said, you know what? Since you make really good decisions and I'm kind of bad at it, why don't you let me know which way I'm supposed to go this time, Lord? We're going to bow your heads with me, please, because every one of us has that decision making that we need to make. And you know, as I was talking about temporal and eternal, something popped up in your mind, and he wants you to deal with it right now, okay? Take your, take your own hand and remove it out of the 
eternal box and put it in the temporal box. And now your eternal box is purified. Your eternal box is now cleansed of temporal matters that don't even matter at all. And now you're going to learn to prioritize the way you should. In Jesus' name, amen. Could we clap our hands unto the Lord? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, you're so good. You're so kind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus is the ark of God. There is one door to enter into it. John 10. I'd like to read John 10 for us, please. As soon as I get everything working up here for me. Hallelujah. John 10 and 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. I believe faith is one of those eternal matters. Faith is an eternal matter. It's something that is so hard for us to just put our hands on and grab because, see, it's, it doesn't work that way. It, is, it doesn't work in the temporal realm. It works in the eternal realm. It unlocks doors. It unlocks your heart. It unlocks you to allow to love like you deserve to not only love, but to be loved. And you'll say to yourself, I don't understand that, Brother Thornton. Well, in order to, order, order to understand his love for us, that door has to be unlocked. And he has to open up those eternal weights and place those eternal weights in us that says, this is what matters. This is how my scale works. See, your scale works by natural weights and natural design. And if this over here balances this out, but let me, let me show you my scale. See, my scale works a little differently. I put a, put a measure of love right here. And anything you want to put on the other side can't outweigh my love. Sorry about that. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Hallelujah. But by faith, Noah, being warned of God of all things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heirs of righteousness, which is by faith. Imagine, everything is now yours. You got into the boat, you didn't own everything. Noah hops into this boat, climbs inside, and it says that the Lord shut the door and sealed it. Okay? It's hard for you to seal something and get into a boat, but it said the Lord had sealed the door behind him. When he gets into this boat, he shares everything with the multitudes that's on the face of this earth. But when he got outside of that boat, everything that he had to share before was his. Everything his eyes behold was his and the other seven souls that's on the boat. He can change the playing field, folks. When you think that somebody's got the upper hand on you, climb in the ark. Because when you climb in that ark and he decides it's time for you to come out on some dry ground, it won't be the same as when you went in. And you'll say to yourself, brother, what are you even talking about? You know what problems are existing in your life right now. And you try to de deal with them as naturally as you can. And the only thing he's requiring you to do is climb in. Get inside of me. Get good and hid inside of me. And I promise you, when I tell you to come on out, the playing field has been changed. No longer do they have all the toys. No longer do they have all the goods. And I, even I, will recompense. I'll make, hey, he'll, he'll make your enemy your friend. Some of us in here don't want our enemy to become our friend. This is a sea law moment. 
This is one of those times when you just got to really get to understanding something. Is it temporal? This friendship or this enemy in my life, is this temporal? Or is this going to be an eternal matter that goes on past the veil? I want to believe this, that everybody that has ever done me wrong and everybody I've ever done wrong in my life is a temporal matter. Because it don't matter. We're going to move past this and we're going, to get for, we're going to get forward from this. I am going to be healed of every temporal matter. And you can be healed of every temporal matter. There is not one thing that he said you can't be healed from and be able to see every eternal thing that means something. I hopefully I'm drawing a real good line in the sand today and letting you understand this. It's black, white, wrong, right. It fits either in one of the two categories. It's either a temporal matter that don't matter or it's an eternal matter that means everything. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And then 2 Peter 2 and 5. And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eighth, the eighth person. He saved Noah, the eighth person. You know, it's just weird how he just throws things in there. The eighth person. Eighth representing a new day. A brand new beginning. Eternal day. An eternal... Oh, boy. Hallelujah. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Amen. See, Jesus, you need to hear this and you need to say it with your own lips. You ready for this? Jesus is more than enough. We're going to try that with everybody together. One, two, three. Jesus is more than enough. As the natural ark of Noah handled every wave and remained upright. It remained upright. Well, how important is that? Well, you go in a boat and you see how important upright is. It's real important. Amen? It says right here that it remained So also those hidden Christ will remain upright. And everything that wants to toss you in the storms of life, and, and, and I, I promise you, it'll be every temporal thing. Okay? It won't matter a lick, okay? And it'll toss you to and fro like you're just in a big old ocean and the waves are encompassing you all around about. But then you get into the eternal that says, I'll keep you upright before them. My spirit will keep you upright before them. Your flesh will let you sink and drown every time. Because that flesh is not about eternal matters. This knee is not about eternal matters. It hurts so bad when I put weight on it that it says, get doctor's names, get it fixed so you don't have to hurt forever. But in the eternal matter, it says, maybe this is your opportunity to see his healing. Maybe this is your opportunity to become a healing. Anybody want to become a healing? I know that's a real touchy one right there. I want to believe him, but I'm not sure I'm ready to be made whole by him. That's a transfer from temporal to eternal. A whole position is an eternal position. I don't want to just be healed. Make me whole. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. None that have entered into the ark of Jesus has ever been lost. Anybody here got a testimony of one person that has truly entered into the ark of Jesus that he couldn't take care of? I don't know. I don't know anybody. In closing with this, but it's kind of a long closing, okay? I want to read Luke 7 and 19. Hallelujah. And this is what started it all off. I was asleep, woke up one morning, and this is what the Lord... He kind of puts you in that third person kind of sometimes. It's kind of weird. I don't know how to explain it. But I'm, I'm happy with it because any way he chooses to talk to me, I'll, I'll take it. Amen? 
Luke 7 and 19, and it said, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Anybody know how this finishes? I bet you do. Art thou he that should come, or we look for another? This is the man that looked at all those Pharisees and said, You hypocrites, <laughs> you vipers, okay? He's got a boldness. He, a, he has an eternal boldness that was rising up in him saying that, hey, I'm not even worthy to unloosen or unlatch the shoes of this guy that's coming behind me. But behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. This is that same guy. And you'll say to yourself, well, why has he got a language change going on over here? He's calling his two disciples and he sent them to Jesus saying, art thou he... <laughs> That should come or we look for another. Well, see, a language sometimes can be affected by temporal things. He's not in the best position right now. He is not in the, uh, the Regency Hotel. He is not being brought food by a raven. He's in the most dire straits, knowing that his end is probably coming near pretty soon. And he knows this, that all that preaching... Is coming, and it, it kind of got him in this trouble. See, eternal, eternal stuff will give you temporal problems sometimes. <laughs> you'll, you'll have family members that'll look at you cross-eyed saying, why, why, why are you living like that? Why, why, you ain't gonna always be like that. Let them live in a temporal, you live in the eternal. And don't let them try to persuade you otherwise. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But see, doubt crept in. The temporal matters were affecting John. It said, and here's the biggie. Jesus has not come by to visit him. Do you read one place where Jesus went by and visited him? Because if Jesus did, he don't have to send two disciples asking him, are thou he? Or we do need to look for another. Right? Jesus, don't you know it's a part of your job description to visit the people in prisons, the people that are oppressed, the people, Jesus, aren't you about your father's business? I want to read again. And in the same hour, verse 21, and in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. And to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he. See, this is, a, this is a, one of those eternal moments right here. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Because see, offenses, even though they must come, they're in the temporal. Okay? But when you're in the eternal, offenses don't matter. They can put up every offense they want. It doesn't affect you because you're not in the affecting zone. The temporal zone, you feel all the pains and the aches and the hurts. But over here in this eternal zone, you weigh it out with his scale. And that scale of love, I wish I, wish I could draw a picture of what he mentally gave me a few moments ago of that, that scale of love. We've all seen those scales before to where, you know, we're looking for a balance. Let it be even, okay? When my mom passed, you know, I told all my sisters, which I got two, I said, I don't care to have everything. I said, I just wanted to, if, if you end up with uh, the gold necklace, let's put a value on it. This is before, sister, you know, so I mean, Sister Booker, I was, I was thinking temporal, okay? I said, let's just put a value on in today's current market, and then when it comes time to divvy up the sale of the house, that will be deducted off of your portion of the pie, right? So if you end up with, let's say, $5,000 worth of goods, okay, you don't get an equal third of the pie, you get minus that 5000 portion of the pie. And then my sister came to me, and she says, why don't we just do away with that? And I said, you know, you're right, we need to. I said, I wasn't thinking right. I was thinking what's equal for you should be equal for me and nobody else ends up 
a little bit more than the other. But if we really start measuring the old, uh, you know, I, I, I want to say it one way, but it ain't. So anyway, if we really start measuring things up that way, of what's fair and unfair, it just keeps you so much into the temporal realm. And all of a sudden, they got more than I got, and, and it's not fair, and why'd they end up getting this, and I wanted that. I'm going to stay in here today. <laughs> the people that have passed on wouldn't want you arguing about the present stuff you got to divvy up. Okay? I honestly, honestly, when I spoke with Brother Singleton before he passed, the main thing that was on his mind was making sure people knew eternal matters. It wasn't the temporal matters that he hung on to. I, don't even, I have no clue as his bank account. I have no clue as to what he had to share up. But it didn't affect him. Pastor, he had got to that place to where we'd leave a Thursday night and sit in front of his house for like a half an hour just telling each other the stuff that matters. Okay? And it made a difference in my life, the stuff he shared with me. He said, he said boss, he said, he said, you know, I've had people take from me, family members take from me, but it don't matter. So it's getting that priority right. Anybody understand the word priority? <laughs> I'm learning priority. You'll say, brother, you're 53 years old, you're just now getting priority? I'm not even sure I ever fully understand it, but I do have a better understanding after last Thursday because I do know this. It's either temporal or it's eternal. And I need to learn which toy box to put it in. Amen? Amen. We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. But hallelujah. But it says right here, it said that uh, we're going to read 24. Hallelujah. I think I'm skipping a spot. I am skipping a spot. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me. When I woke up, this is what he spoke to me, and I wrote it down. He said, I named you, John. John, his name actually equals graced by God. The nature of the name. In Philippians 2 and 9, which is on this page right here that I just put around behind me. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. What he was trying to let John know was this. Your mommy didn't name you. Your daddy didn't name you. I gave you your name before you was even born, John. This is what he was rolling in my head because, see, he knew I had a day coming. He knew I had a day coming to where there was going to be this message preached. Okay? This I received before Thursday night's message. John was looking at eternal matters, excuse me, temporal matters, and thinking they was eternal. And it's not so. Amen? Amen. But see, Noah's boat, he even called it mercy to me. And I never looked at that boat. I always thought it was just a judgment. But how much more could a boat be called mercy than to warn somebody for a hundred years? A hundred years of warning before one day of judgment. I would call that boat mercy, wouldn't you? Amen. Hallelujah. But how can I categorize, how can I categorize my situation, Lord? Is it temporal or is it eternal? See, the temporal vision is distorted, but the eternal vision is life-changing. If you'd stand with me, please. I got one more verse I'd like to read, and then we're going to go to pour the Lord in prayer. And he says, But what went ye out to see, a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. And in 7 and 28, For I say unto you, Among those that are born of a woman, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Today I just wanted to bring forth a message that he gave me, that pastor gave me on Thursday, which tied everything together. 
and said this. If it's eternal, it's important. But if it's temporary, leave it in the temporary. And don't let your heart be affected otherwise. Because there's a lot of stuff that can affect you in the temporary. Even the greatest prophet that was born of a woman was affected by temporal conditions. I don't know what your temporal condition is today. I have no clue as to what you're going through. I know that this knee is temporary. I've been here before. I walked it out for about three months before. And it, it kind of got better, but there was always a little glitch. But I could walk fine. But if I want to be whole. <laughs> and I'm not going to let this affect my wholeness. Okay? I'm not going to affect whether Jesus heals this or not to affect how I think eternally. Talking to people about the Lord, sharing with them about speaking in tongues, a heavenly language, sharing with them that Jesus knows what you're going through, He died for what you're going through, and that you too could have and live inside of Him. That's eternal. That's real stuff. So today is going to be really odd. I don't really want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for somebody else because it's going to be like that boomerang that as you send it out, it returns unto you more than what you sent. So I want you to get somebody in your mind today that says, you know what, I really wish they could understand about eternal matters versus temporal matters. I really wish that they could hear the voice of God. I really wish that they could just see it for what God sees it and hear it for what God hears it. Once you get that person in your mind, I want you just to just pray for them. You don't have to say their name out loud. But I want you to pray for them and I want you to bless them. And I want you to pray an eternal prayer over their life. One that matters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you so much. I don't know exactly who they have, but I have somebody directly in my mind right now that I would love to pray for. I want you to touch them in such a special way, dear God. I want what's temporal to just, I mean, flash like a neon sign that says, does not matter, does not matter, does not matter, does not matter, will never matter, will never matter, it does not matter, it will never matter. Let it just flash, dear God, like that sign on the, on the side of the street, dear God. And all of a sudden, allow eternal matters to come and just light up their life. Let it reveal every dark spot in them. Let them, dear Lord, be cleansed by your spirit, cleansed by your blood. You seal them like the ark was sealed back in Noah's day, but seal them with your life. Seal them within and without, dear God, inside and out. Seal them with something that matters. Seal them with eternal things, dear God. Seal them with things that just will take them from this day until the next day, until the next day, and there'll be a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father, I pray this for this special person, and I believe this for this special person, because see, God, you don't have accidents. When you recreated this earth after Noah stepped out of that ark, where the ark finally rested was no accident. Where, where and when it rested was no accident. It's all in your divine will and your divine plan, and it's an eternal location. Thank you, dear God for an eternal location that the ark can rest inside of me and I can rest inside of the ark. God, we thank you for this. Praise you for this, dear God. In Jesus' precious name, we love and thank you. Amen, amen, amen. May you truly be blessed this day and understand what really matters. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Take the scales off our eyes, dear God. Let us step into something just like it's for brand new today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Eternal things, dear God. Eternal things that matter, dear God. Loving my brother and my sister. Loving, dear Lord, my enemies, dear God. Loving, dear God, until I can see like you can see. And I can hear like you can hear. And I can be like you are, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you so, so, so much, dear God. In Jesus' name, God bless you today. Hallelujah.